Good evening and welcome. Let's give it a second. A few people coming. Right. Yeah, okay. Right, I'm live. So, good evening to my... Uh, welcome to my weekly 10 um, show. Tonight we're talking about open mind or closed mind. So, uh, it's been a really busy day today as well. Um, and a busy week. I've signed up two new clients for my five month long program this week. And I've just had a meeting today um, with a senior lec lecturer at Birmingham University. They want me to go and do a talk at Birmingham University. That'll be a newbie for me, talking in a university. But um, yeah, great. I'm looking forward to that. Um, also two new more prisons. Aylesbury is one of them. And I'm still in talks with another one, so I'm not going to say who that one is yet. But hopefully I'll be able to announce that soon. But yeah, uh, and I'm doing a talk at um, the Mount on the 13th of December. Well, it's an all day. I'm doing two talks, actually. One in the morning, one in the afternoon to two groups of prisoners. Um, so I'll be <laughs> in, in the Mount prison all day long. And it's been a while since I've been there for a whole day. So <laughs> it's going to be an experience. So yeah, a good experience, though. Not a bad one. So, yeah, it's been very busy. And I will say, I mean, if, if people are interested in working with me and um, you're sitting on the fence thinking about whether to do it or not, whatever, this is the time because um, I, 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 really, I said this last week on my show, I'm literally running out of space. I can only work with 10 people at any given time a month. And, um, well, I'm up to eight now and um, I've got another person starting in January so uh, that'll be down to nine so I'm literally down to one <laughs> so um, yeah if you're interested in working with me get in touch because I won't be able to do it the next few months are going to be extremely busy for me so yeah please get in touch if you are thinking about that so okay right tonight I'm talking about how open-minded are you you know many of us will tell ourselves we're open-minded you know, and um, it's a normal thing. We'll say, yeah, I'm open-minded to new things, blah, blah, blah. None of us really like to think of ourselves as being closed-minded. And yet, even when we tell ourselves that we're open-minded, um, we will judge things as from a place of either right or wrong, good or bad. And that's completely normal. We're human beings. The reality is we make our minds up about things in life and it can be very difficult for us to then change our perceptions of it or minds or whatever it is around particular situations in life you know we become fixed in our beliefs and our ideas most of our thoughts originate uh, externally we have um, we create beliefs um, through our life experiences um, as well as the people around us our family our friends the media society everything that we experience creates or influences the beliefs and attitudes that we create throughout our lives so we're always creating new beliefs um, which are originate externally and it is those beliefs thoughts and attitudes which create the bit basis of your belief system okay so if we have a negative experience in life uh, at some stage throughout our life we create a belief around that that experience and um, or scenario whatever it was and we judge it we tend to judge that experience through the lens of either right or wrong you know good or bad fear assumptions we make assumptions about things um, we tell ourselves stories about situations interpretations so we create beliefs around whatever the situation may be that we're experiencing at any given time and that creates the basis of your belief system so every time we encounter a situation that reminds us um, of an experience that we might have had in the past in some way or it you know it doesn't necessarily even have to remind us consciously it could be subconsciously it reminds us of something that's happened in the past it triggers a response a thought uh, a belief in our minds now we're not necessarily aware that that's happening you know we we, we won't realize half the time because only 98 percent of the time 98 percent of the time we live in our subconscious mind only two two percent we're actually consciously aware of what we're thinking at any given time so these thoughts and beliefs aren't things we're aware of most of the time they're triggered from past experiences that we've developed um beliefs around over the years and then 
what happens is when we have an experience of some sort which triggers us in some way, then that belief or thought or attitude comes to the surface in our subconscious mind. And that then triggers an emotional response, a thought and an emotional response to suit, which then relates or reaffirms that originally held belief or attitude. So I want to share with you tonight an experience, an example of um, how this works, and which demonstrates how our past beliefs um, can hold us back, hold us back from moving forward with our lives and creating the things that we truly want to be, um, do in our lives and really being the people that we really want to be in our lives. And now having a closed mind when it comes to challenging our deeply held uh, beliefs and attitudes can literally prevent us from seeing anything that we experience in life with any sort of objectivity, any sort of um, clarity and with, with, uh, without, with judgment instead of non-judgment. You know, so if you're going through any experience in life and you're um, looking at it from the past perspectives that have been triggered in some way, then you're only ever going to see it from a perspective which is very narrow, which is going to prevent you from seeing the full picture in the way that you truly want to, in order for you to learn, grow and move forward from that. OK, so not that long ago. I took on a new client. Now, I sent my email out to a lot of people this week about this, and it was very, um, you know, I called it my first knockout blow because I've had 22 clients since I started um, working as a professional coach. And this was the first one, which I wouldn't call a failure as such, but that I wasn't successful in getting them to where they wanted to be. Now, part of my program and my process, my five month long uh, foundations program, it includes um, clients at the very start receiving what's called a coaching agreement. Now, this is essentially a contract of agreement whereby I outline for the client what they can expect from me, as well as acting as a money back guarantee. Because I offer all my clients uh, a money back guarantee that if after one month they're not happy, they get their money back. Simple as that. So this contract acts as their money back guarantee as well as a binder between us working, it tells them exactly how long are we going to work together and what they can expect from me when we're, we are working together. So by law, I'm required to send these out. You know, anyone who's in any business will have a contract. If you're doing a, a, a you come into agreement, you're doing a deal with someone, you'll have a contract. And it's no different with me and my clients. So on this occasion, however, uh, my new client um, took exception to this um, and he tore the contract up before he even read the thing. You know, he just tore it straight up. And the reason why, I mean, it, it triggered a negative response in him, a reaction. And he automatically, uh, it created some kind of belief in his mind um, that it was in some way a negative thing. So when I asked him about this, when I questioned about this, the, 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 the motive for tearing up the contract, um, it transpired that he'd had a negative experience in the past uh, where he'd had a similar document um, which he then equated um, to be the same this time around. So he made an assumption that it's going to be some sort of thing related to last time, which was a bad experience, obviously. So he thought the two were similar, even though there was nothing connecting the two at all. He assumed that receiving the contract in some way forced him to do something that he didn't particularly want to do. And it binded him to something that he didn't wasn't sure about at that stage, perhaps. And he felt restricted by that. And it to it's a totally normal reaction. It's the thing. Uh, when we have experienced something in the past and we it's not been a good experience and we have a similar experience in the future, we equate that. We, we, we see it through the same lens as what happened in the past, even though the two are not related at all. And what this also shows, however, is that when we are not open minded um, in our approach to new things, we always judge them as if they uh, if they do not align with our core belief system, our belief system. Uh, so we'll see it as right or wrong, good or bad, and we'll judge it. And that's what happened in this case. And in, in this particular case, it prevented him from seeing the benefit of having the money back guarantee, you know, and the point of the whole contract in the first place, even though it, was, it didn't bother me if he tore it up or not. But he didn't see the benefit of it. Into, he didn't actually understand what it was about because he never read it. <laughs> so 
he judged it from that a place of either restriction, fear, whatever it may be that he'd, he'd been telling himself about that situation. He was judging that situation and it prevented him seeing it with any objectivity, clarity, you know, and, uh, you know, with complete judgment. He was judging it from the past. So having an open mind enables us to see past those core beliefs and thoughts that we develop in the past, which aren't necessarily helping us move forward. So instead of um, learning and growing from new experiences, we're judging things and we're avoiding them and we're not engaging with them. And that means we're less likely to move forward from new experiences. Instead, we become rooted in our fixed beliefs or what we think is happening when really it's very different from what we actually think is happening. So we, we, we miss out on opportunities. A closed mind, however, will also stop you seeing anything um, past your own set of fixed beliefs. It will stop you actually seeing anything with any sort of clarity, which let's face it, we all have. You know, it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter how open minded you think you are. You have fixed beliefs. We all do. So the difference between a growth mindset and a fixed one, however, is that people with a growth mindset are much more aware of the fact that they've got the, these, these fixed beliefs to begin with and they're able to then go and challenge that. They're able to challenge their own beliefs and biases from a place where they uh, are able to recognise that their own thinking isn't nat necessarily accurate or correct and that it's influenced by other things such as assumptions and fears and you know other people's opinions and so on you know and it doesn't necessarily paint a picture of what's really going on all it does is paint a picture of what you think is going on and that's not necessarily the case it's usually not the case in fact so i once had a very fixed mind um mindset myself for many years and uh you know uh, I, I i my views were right my beliefs were right and no one else if someone said something that didn't align with belief i'd argue with them to try and convince them that mine were right and theirs were wrong this is the difference i mean you know people end up arguing all day long on social media because their fixed beliefs are the right ones and his whoever they're arguing with are the wrong ones that's 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 exactly what this is all about people get fixed in their beliefs and they say right i'm right you're wrong the reality is both sides are probably wrong <laughs> and that's the truth because they're not able to look at their own perspectives with any sort of objectivity and clarity and that stops them learning it stops them growing it stops them moving forward and doing things that actually would help them in their in their life and you know if you if you want to learn grow and move forward in life it's important that you recognize this and you're able to then challenge your own beliefs challenge your fixed beliefs and look at things in a different perspective which actually helps you move forward and those are the people who i truly want to work with the people who actually want to challenge those sort of beliefs um who recognize that their beliefs attitudes and thoughts aren't necessarily serving them in the best way um and have an open mind people who have an open mind and who are now wish to create a belief system which actually serves them in the way that they truly desire and i now have like like i said two places left for now but in january it'll be one left in my five month long foundations program if you're open-minded committed to creating something special with your life and determined to lay the foundations and success um, for a very successful 2023 then please get in touch with me. <laughs> and on that note, I'm going to say I love you and leave you. And um, yeah, be open-minded. See you soon. Bye.